When a woman is unfairly targeted by a store manager who seems to have it in for disabled customers, she gives him a rude awakening when she reveals her identity and gets him fired on the spot. As Emma approached the access ramp to the downtown urban market, she found the way partially blocked by a produce trolley. Was it a problem? Not to her. Emma prided herself on her superior wheelchair driving skills, and with a bit of back and forth, she managed to squeeze past. However, this could have gone way worse and her mobility been more severely compromised. As Emma wheeled herself inside, she was immediately impressed. The layout of the fresh produce section made it really easy to navigate, and she was overwhelmed by the huge selection of fruit, vegetables, and condiments. She grabbed a basket, plopped it on her lap, and made her way to the nearest aisle. She selected a few juicy tomatoes for salad, and then moved her wheelchair to the fruit section. But here, she encountered a totally unexpected obstacle, a youngish man who had not been there a moment before. He wore a neat uniform with the store's insignia on the lapels, and, according to the name tag he wore, this was Richard Watkin, store manager. She was about to congratulate him on the immaculate efficiency of his store when he reached down and put a hand on one armrest of the wheelchair. The gesture felt awkward and controlling to Emma, but she was still prepared to give him the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps he was just one of those demonstrative people who were just all in your face without realizing that most people found that irritating. But then he opened his mouth, and what he said shocked her to the core. I regret to inform you, he began with not one hint of that regret evident in his slightly smug tone of voice, that we don't have enough staff to make any special accommodations for people like you people like you, thought Emma. He made those words sound like an insult. Surely he would not be that insensitive. What do you mean? She asked mildly. She must have misunderstood him. People like you, he repeated one more time. Cripples. I run a tight ship here, and I can't spare anyone to serve as your personal shopper. I would never ask, Emma began. But Richard Watkin was far from finished with his rant. Here, he threw something into her basket, almost crushing those beautiful tomatoes. A reach your grabber, and I suggest you use it. That is, if you can manage it. Thank you. With that, and without even waiting for a response, he turned around and flounced off. Emma took a deep breath, shocked at how the interaction had gone and the way he had just wrested control from her without even giving her an opportunity to reply. Was he that rude to everyone? Emma's fingers closed around her phone. Oh, how she itched to give him a taste of his own medicine, and that would be so easy to do. But then she replaced the phone. She did not want to cause a scene, even if she was pretty incensed by the encounter. She just wanted to get her shopping done and leave this unfriendly space. It was such a pity. Years ago, when she lived in the area, she always loved coming here. But now, she was pretty sure she would never visit this store again. Emma could still feel the eyes of the manager boring into hers, but she did her best to conceal these feelings. What was his case? She wasn't in the way. She wasn't distracting anyone. And in a store, what could be more important than attending to customers? A few aisles further, Emma was surprised to come up against a familiar face. And, unfortunately, this person had a disturbing story to tell about the downtown urban market. Emma remembered Nicole Page, a serious, quick-witted woman whose common sense and team spirit made this branch of the downtown urban market one of the best-performing outlets of the whole chain. Well, that was the case three years ago. But now, looking her in the eyes, it was clear that changes at the store had also taken its toll on staff members. There was a weary look of resignation and defeat in Nicole's eyes. Emma chose to ignore that and plastered a friendly smile on her face. Hi, Nicole, she said brightly. It's been a good while since I was here. Two years? Three? You have no idea how good it is to see you again, Nicole blurted. But as you can probably see, Things aren't so great here anymore. 
She hesitated. Patiently, Emma listened to Nicole, and what she told her made her very unhappy. She did not like using her influence unnecessarily, but after listening to Nicole's story, she felt conflicted about maintaining her disguise as just an ordinary shopper. He disrespects us, was one of the first things Nicole had shared with Emma. Even senior workers who have been with the store for many, many years. When someone makes a mistake, even if it's an honest mistake, he belittles that person, often in front of the whole staff. And some of his rules are really, really ridiculous. It's as if he's just on a big power trip and wants to see what buttons he can push. He even monitors our bathroom breaks, Nicole told Emma. And when one of our workers went too many times, in his opinion, he actually suggested that she buy a pack of adult diapers. She was so humiliated that she quit on the spot. That's horrible, Emma agreed. Nicole went on, some of us are staying because we need the money, but many of the staff members are desperately unhappy, and it's not as if he treats the customers any better. He is ruining this place. I had an unpleasant run-in with him, Emma said, her eyes going to the reacher grabber which was still lying at the bottom of the basket. Oh, everybody saw that. Nicole told her, and we were outraged at his behavior. Emma shrugged. Let's just forget about it. I'm sure he's much too busy to bother me again. She waved a friendly goodbye to Nicole and moved into another aisle. So far, her visit to the downtown urban market filled her with mixed feelings. There were a few positives. The store was immaculately tidy and would certainly satisfy the most stringent regulations of any health inspector. The floor shone, and there were several sanitizer stations that were well-maintained. Additionally, she was impressed by the vast selection of products. There were five different types of apples on display, and she also noticed various less common items such as dragon fruit, persimmon, lychee, cherimoya, kins, and star fruit. It could have been an absolute paradise for food lovers, if only the store's atmosphere was more welcoming. Store manager Richard Watkins obviously ran the store like a military compound rather than a place of commerce. The staff were all visibly tense and avoided eye contact, rather than engaging potential customers with a friendly smile. Did smiles cost money? Richard seemed to think so, and that must be why they were in short supply on the shop floor. But worst of all was the manager's attitude to the very people who paid his salary, the customers. Richard seemed to regard them as the enemy rather than a valuable resource. That was probably why most shoppers came and went quickly after selecting only a few items. She didn't see any mothers of small children or elderly customers. And that wasn't a surprise if they risked the same sort of passive-aggressive harassment from management. Seeing this filled Emma with sadness for the store, not least because she remembered it being very different in the past. Although she had spent two years studying abroad, she used to be a regular when she lived in the neighborhood. The previous manager was an old friend whom Emma had known since childhood. And while he may not have run as tight a ship as Richard, his kindness won him many loyal customers. In his day, people traveled from other areas to shop at this branch of the downtown urban market group. It had been a real relief to see that older employees such as Nicole still honored these values. but disturbing that management failed to support them when they were only doing their job. After Emma checked out her purchases, Nicole offered to help her get them in the car. In the past, she had often done it without even checking with her colleagues, but now it was heartbreaking to see her hesitate over a simple act of kindness. And at the door, Emma and Nicole found their way blocked again by Richard Watkin. Ignoring Emma for the moment, he produced a white envelope and handed it to Nicole. The shop assistant looked flustered and confused, but Watkins seemed to enjoy her discomfort. Open it, he said with a nasty little smile. I'll get to it in a second. I just want to help this customer first, Nicole began, but Richard interrupted her rudely. Open it now, he demanded. Emma tried to edge past him to avoid embarrassing Nicole, but Richard blocked her. No, stay, he said, seeing you are such good buddies. I'm sure she'd want to share this with you. Nicole tore the envelope with trembling fingers and withdrew one sheet of paper. Reading the contents, she paled visibly. 
Then she handed the letter to Emma. It was brief, to the point, and terribly unfair. Watkin had actually used Nicole's interaction with Emma as grounds for a disciplinary warning. Watkin had actually used Nicole's interaction with Emma as grounds for a disciplinary warning, claiming that she had violated company policy. As misconduct, he cited insubordination, misuse of company property, and disrupting productivity. I hope you're satisfied, he said to Emma before turning around and stalking off. Emma's blood boiled, especially when she saw the tears glinting in Nicole's eyes. She squeezed Nicole's hand. Don't worry about my bags, she said. Go back to work, but know that he's not winning the next round. As Nicole went back inside, Emma pulled out her phone and dialed the one number she knew off by heart. Richard was due for a wake-up call, and it would not be a pleasant one. As she put the phone down, she allowed herself another nostalgic glance around the store. At the entrance to every branch of the downtown urban market, there was a black and white picture of a smiling man surprising a little girl with a trolley full of balloons. At one time, Emma hated that picture because it reminded her of all the dreams and wishes that floated out of reach, like balloons after the terrible accident that changed her life so severely. That little girl was so innocent, with no idea of what lay ahead for her. But she had gotten over it, and today she no longer minded. Because, and this was the one thing that neither Richard nor Nicole knew about her, Emma was that little girl so excitedly jumping up and down because she had just turned three. Her father's startup was one year old. The downtown urban market stores had been a part of her life for as long as she could remember. Usually, she took care to hide her identity, and her family had always respected her privacy in that regard. She did not want to be treated differently for who she was, nor pitied for what she was. But Richard had crossed a line with her. His behavior towards her was totally out of line, and she knew that it would trouble her father deeply to know of the treatment she had been subjected to by one of his own employees. She didn't have to wait long for a response, and hearing her father's voice already made her feel better. As briefly as possible, she described the original encounter, Nicole's comments about the store and Richard's unfair targeting of the helpful shop assistant. He listened without comment until she had finished speaking. Then, he said, I'll take care of it, and hung up. Within 20 minutes, a black car pulled up and two men got out. The one she recognized as Carlos, her father's head of operations. The younger man who was with him paused at Emma's car and asked, Are you okay, sis? Never better, she replied with a smile. Wait for me at that coffee shop across the street, her brother Eric said. If you buy coffee, I'll fill you in after we are done. Of course, Emma said. Right now, she definitely did not want to be Richard for all the money in the world. According to what Eric told her later, retribution had been swift and brutal. At first, Richard tried to deny his harassment of her, but Carlos merely asked to review the security footage, which told a different story. Carlos also interviewed Nicole to get her side of the story, and then Richard was given his marching order. According to Eric, he looked suitably shell-shocked and Emma almost felt sorry for him. Nicole's warning was rescinded at the very highest level of authority. But then, Carlos had another surprise for her. With Richard's sudden departure, there was now a vacancy for store manager. With Nicole's years of experience and a character reference from someone who was highly regarded within the downtown urban market group, she was offered the position for a probationary period. Eric recommended that all stores in the group initiate a series of diversity and disability awareness workshops. Did you tell him who I was? Emma asked. Of course, Eric said with satisfaction. He never saw it coming. You didn't tell anyone else though, did you? Emma asked her brother. Of course not, he replied. You wouldn't consider becoming our secret shopper on a more permanent basis? Emma shrugged but then smiled. I'll think about it, she said. What a satisfying ending. Do you think Richard will learn a lesson, or is he a lost cause? If you have a similar story about someone who messed with the wrong person, tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear it. For now though, we're out of here. We'll see you in the next video.